I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Parry. You're listening to the two mics on the warm-up coming to you live from the XL in London's Docklands ahead of the game at the Emirates live on Talk Sport. We've got a packed show for you. We're talking to Harry Redknapp and Paul Dickov ahead of all the weekend action. Three live games across the Talk Sport network, of course. Paul is going to follow in the footsteps of Wayne Rooney and open his own museum. We'll find out what's going on with Tony Poulis, why Rangers have fired their manager, and the best places to eat at a table for one. Porky, of course, is the expert, uh, so he can tell Sam Allardyce what to do next time he fancies a Nando's. 08717 Double four. You're listening to Two Mics live from the XL right here on the warm up. We are the Two Mics. This is Talk Sport and it's the warm up live from the XL. It's time to say a very, very good morning uh, to a very cold looking Mr. Mike, a porky parry. Very good morning to Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. And I have to say, winter's finally arrived. It There's has. snow out there. Bit of snow. You should, have come in, you should have come in from Sussex. Snow there flights. was an awful lot of snow coming well, in from there. Well, I came in from uh, Stockbroker Belt, Surrey. Did you? Battled through a blizzard that oh, was yeah. breaking, but got here eventually. Trains working this morning, were they? No, they weren't. No. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with the train drives in this country, but so many of them seem to be sick now yeah. that there aren't any trains you they're all running. working as cab drivers uh, on the side? I, I don't think so. Eh? By the way, do you see we got an obituary of our old friend Harry Miller from We did. Uh, from yeah, America. we'll have to have a read of that, we, we will. He so he obviously is, driver. in fact, dead then. Yeah, he's dead. Died in 2003, unfortunately. But anyway, yes. let's, get, uh, let's get to matters. There's a lot of things to talk about this morning. Well, I mean, the one I most like yeah. is Jürgen. Now, I love Jürgen Klopp because I think he's vivacious and, and he's active and yeah. energetic and mm. he's the spirit of his club, isn't he? But he certainly is. He has he's been drinking something well. strong. He's been drinking something strong. Do you think he's been on the schnapps? <laughs> I snap shot too. Oh, the slim of it so motivates me. Yeah. But uh, considering they haven't won yet this year yes. in anything except a cup replay right. against Plymouth, yeah. to say that, well, don't worry, we finished this season very well. <laughs> We're into 14 games. <laughs> I don't think you're going to win 14 games. You don't have games. to do the hello, hello voice no. for Jürgen Klopp. He actually well, speaks rather well. He does, actually. And His I'm, English uh, is magnificent. Uh, don't worry, I do it with great affection. Is that right? But, um, but I mean, quite frankly, uh, I've got my own prediction about what could happen today, and yeah. that is that Lou, Lou, Lou Kaku. Well, what's that going to do with Jürgen Klopp? Well, what I'm saying is people think it's ridiculous for mm. Jürgen Klopp to say Liverpool can win 14 games. Well, they've got to play Spurs before they do anything else, At uh, right? 5.30 today. Uh, and that is going to be live on TalkSport, Talk of course. Uh, but that's going to be a pretty tough game for him to win, isn't it? It is. But my prediction for mm. today is that Lou Kaku yeah. can score a hat-trick again today. Yeah, you made this prediction the other night. Well, you know, this is a guy who has yeah. never scored consecutive uh, hat-tricks. Well, one very, game few after another. Have. very few people well, have. Very few people have. Well, exactly. So, I mean, almost certainly, the one thing yeah. you know about Lukaku yeah. is that he scores a hat-trick one game. Yes. Well, in fact, four goals he scored last yes. weekend. This weekend, he'll score none. Well, Simple you, as that. You, you, it could well be. I'd rather find out what's happening with Arsene Wenger, which is the early game, right? Arsenal against yeah. Hull. Yeah. Hull, who have got a new manager, Mr. Silva, yes. uh, who's, re- who's doing some pretty good things for him. All right. You know, well, it would have been all right. He's going to get them out of relegation. I've told you that before. Huge Arsene Wenger apparently is yeah. going around telling people this is going to be his last well, season. No, he's not going around telling people. No more people. bottle no, no. kicking for him. No, well, let's get this uh, absolutely precise because yeah. old righty, Ian Wright. Ian you know, Wright. Ian Wright. You're right, a, right. Your old mate. An old mate of mine. Exactly. Yeah, that's, absolutely. When was the last time you spoke to him? Uh, about, well, actually, last time I saw him, we were at the same party yeah. before Christmas. That was actually. in December, yeah. That was in December. Yes. I, no, I've, uh, I've, I've been in touch since text wise and all that. Have you? But, uh, but anyway, look. Right, why? Uh, uh, yeah, are you yeah, doing yeah, a yeah. accent for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're doing that. No, I don't know. Listen, what I'm saying is, is that uh, now Wrighty yes. is telling us quite openly, yep. and it's not a secret, it's not whispering in anybody's ear. That's right. He has been in touch with uh, Arsene Wenger That's right. recently, as you would imagine. Well, he saw he, him at a function, I believe. Well, I mean, for a long time, Ian Wright was Arsenal's leading goal scorer, he so was. you'd expect him to have close ties mm. with the club. Yeah. And he says, I mean, Arsene Wenger has not said anything to him like I'm quitting, but Wrighty said his attitude, his demeanour, yeah. the way he spoke, and, mm. and one throwaway phrase about, you know, I may be getting near the end. And, yeah. And that kind of stuff. Well, this will be great news for a lot of Arsenal fans. Well, it'll be a great news for a faction of Arsenal fans. Well, but a I mean, large faction of well, Arsenal fans. Well, maybe, but they are very split on it, aren't they? Mm. You know, they've uh, they've never really. Well, do you know, I think they're less yeah. and less split. I think yeah. more and more this season we're yeah. hearing we're hearing yeah. very few voices from. Uh, from the Emirates and from the fans yes. saying that they must keep Arsene Wenger on. That's right, Many, yeah. many of them are saying if he signs another two years, yeah. you know, that'll be the death knell for him for another two years. Well, yeah, you could say that. It's, uh, it's unusual that he hasn't uh, signed that contract, hasn't it? But talking about managers, I mean, mm. that's uh, Arsene Wenger's position. Yeah. What do we think of Aito Karanka? Uh, Mr. Karanka is a fantastic manager, actually. Yeah. He's a very well, good friend of Jose Mourinho's. He was, in yeah. fact, Jose Mourinho's agent, Jorge Mendes, I yeah. believe, that got him the job at Middlesbrough. That's right. He's ahead of lots of other people, right? And, of course, and, Middlesbrough uh, are playing Everton today. Uh, that's they are. Raised, they are, yeah. but they've been a kind Come of a, 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 they've been a team, I'd say, this year that have yep. gone below the radar. Nobody really is yeah. that. They're not really doing anything great. They're not really no. doing anything terrible. Yeah. You know, and a quite a boring time team to watch. I have to say. Yes. Well, he slagged off the supporters this week. At the same time, he slagged off the board.
board. Slagged off whose supporters? Uh, well, his supporters. Own. Middlesbrough supporters. Never saying, a good idea, that. Saying that, you know, it's an awful atmosphere in this ground yeah. and uh, fans leaving early because they were getting beaten 3-1 at the time to West Ham. So yeah. I suppose you could imagine that fans would leave early. But he had a big moan about the chairman, Steve Gibson. Yeah. Uh, he says Mr Gibson missed out on his top transfer targets. And uh, Well, if you're a manager of a, of a Premier League yes. football club and you don't get what you want in the January yeah. transfer window, yeah. surely you're entitled to say so, aren't you? Well, I suppose so. Mm. I mean, I mean, what managers say, of course, in public and what they say in private is yeah. very interesting as well because Tony Poulis uh, has apparently been oh, saying some things in private yeah. uh, and he may or may not have been saying some things in public. Indeed. He's been accused of uh, uh, of leaking the story yeah. uh, that Saido Berahino failed a drugs test, yes. right? Uh, and so his former captain, uh, Ryan Shawcross, has apparently been uh, sort of having to go back. Mm. He's now stalking Shawcross and gives him a ring, yeah. leaves him a message saying he's a loser. Well, it's the sort of thing you would do. I, I think he's hardly stalking him. You cannot actually arrange to leave a message on somebody's phone, can well, you? Well, of course you can. No, you can't because you ring them because you want to speak to them. Yeah. And if they happen to answer the phone, you speak to them. If they don't answer the phone, you leave a message, right? Well, yeah, but you're prepared so to leave a message, right? You're prepared to leave a There's message. There's nothing worse than getting a phone call from somebody you don't know yeah. uh, and a number you don't recognise yeah. and then they don't leave a message. Stalking, in my view, would be sending a text and mm. saying, loser, loser, and all that. But yeah. if you're, if you're, Which is the sort of thing you'd do as well. I don't think you can ever accuse Tony Poulis of, uh, of backing down in a confrontation. And at one Time. No, although the, the High Court had a different view of that. Uh, of the High Court had a totally different we view of that. About but that. at one time, it was the famous story when he came out the shower and mm. squared up to his own centre forward oh, yeah. and uh, and threatened to knock him about all over the dressing room. Did he? And in fact, the centre forward was a, an Everton failure. Do you remember a reject with Blondet? No, I don't remember, no. Yeah, I don't he, know who you're talking about. He, he, uh, what he did was, he unfortunately bought a, a royal blue... Ferrari oh, yeah. the day before Everton sold him to a team that, <laughs> to Stoke who played in played red, and white red and white stripes. Yeah. And also yeah. red and white stripe Ferrari that looks so good. <laughs> would look so good at all. I mean, why would you do that? Absolutely. Right. Listen, I'll tell you the other thing that gets me. Is what about get... Rangers, by the way? We well, that it's, it's incredible. What's going on there? Well, it seems to me hey? what happens there is you... You get an offer for oh, a, gone mad. You get an offer for another job, yeah. and then we've all done it in the newspaper. No, business. you've done it, and you go Nobody knock else on the door. You knock on the door of the boss that you've hated for years. You say, "Hey, listen, yeah, you, you shove your I'm job. Off. Shove your job. <laughs> I've got a better offer." And then as you're walking out, and the phone rings and says, uh, uh, "You know that job that yeah, you offered you last night? I'd had yet. too much to drink at yeah. the time. Sorry, yeah, don't say anything just <laughs> yeah. yet about it. Absolutely, yeah, too late. Now, listen, I'm very worried about all these footballers. Uh, you know, it's uh, international week coming up. Yes, it is. So, well, Gareth South has been yeah. putting the mockers on yeah. Eddie Jones. I mean, that's why England played so badly against France yeah, last week. Be. They go down to Cardiff, right? Could be. To the Principality Stadium. Could be. I think they're going to get horsed by Wales. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, you know what um, uh, Wales are doing. You know what Wales are doing. What are Wales doing? Uh, in, in fact, I tell, I tell you what. It's what Eddie Jones is doing against Wales. Yeah. He's got he's got his England stars in the dressing room. Yeah. Listening to the greatest hits of who? Tom Jones. Tom Jones. Of course, he was a Welsh icon. Why? Well, I don't know. I think he's, he's see, trying to say. I bet you, know, you that's the Southgate idea. Hey? I bet you any money Southgate gave him that idea. Really? The Southgate's been hanging around the England training camp, really? right? And yeah. apparently they've been exchanging, uh, you know, tips on how yeah. to play better. They've and been... in fact, all that's happened yeah. is instead of England's football team getting better, yeah. England's rugby team's getting that's worse. Right. That's right. So anyway, so the England dressing room now reverberating to my, my, Delilah. my, Delilah. Yeah, that's, a, sing. that's the difference between rugby and football, because mm. of course in football that song's now been banned, yeah. hasn't it? Has so, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, because Why? for being horrible to women. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can sing it at rugby grounds. All, I mean, they well, sing it in the, in the, in the Principality Stadium that's what I'm all saying. the time. But anyway, listen, I was telling you about these managers, right? Now, yeah. getting back to old Karanga, he's going to take his... No, sorry, he's taking his lot off during the uh, break that they've had because yeah. they're at the FA Cup and all that. Oh, yeah. To Benidorm. All oh, right. For a four-day hot break. Yes. Davy Moyes, yes. a great man who ran Everton for 11 years, guess where he's taking his mob? His mob during the international break. I don't know, Iceland? No, well, better, New York, New York, where it's minus four. Yeah. And every morning at 5 a.m. There's snow over there. Yeah, exactly. Every yeah. morning at 5 a.m., yeah. those boys are going to be made to run around Central Park yeah. in minus four degrees. Not That's what idea. I call is, uh, you know, harsh cold weather training. Yeah. That's what they should be and doing. There's a lot more fun in the evenings in New York as well than there is in Benidorm. Yeah, I mean, I all you've got to do in totally Benidorm agree. is start to avoid all the drunks lying on the ground. I, t- I totally agree with you. pretty horrendous, to- I have to say. Totally agree. Crazy, awesome. You're listening to the warm up on Talk Sport. We're here at the XL in London for the London Affiliate Conference with Bet Safe. Uh, we've got loads coming up, including Harry Redknapp, of course. Paul Dickoff's going to be here as well. He might have something interesting to say about Tony Poulis. Porky is here, uh, frantically making notes, of course, uh, because yes. not only have I discovered mm. that they're going to open a Wayne Rooney Museum up in uh, Old Trafford, right? So they're they going to put yeah. all of his stuff in there. Well, they, they, then you're they actually should. planning to open a museum of your own. Uh, I've been planning that for a while. Yeah. Where's and, it going to uh, go? 
Is it going to go what? somewhere in some slum that you've got in no. the depths of Swindon? No, 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 know, no. Where they've got pop-up, all sorts of things No, no, on. no, no. I mean, the point is, you can actually have it online now, can't you? I what, mean, a museum online? Or my uh, well, memorabilia. How can they go there? My, well, people can visit it online, my memorabilia, but I'm going to make it a physical presence. I, I am uh, in the process of mm. thinking about uh, buying a new residence, OK? Buying a new residence? Yeah, quite seriously, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, here yeah. we are down in yeah. Docklands. I mean, they've got lots of empty buildings down well, there. Well, you know... get one down here, you get well, a nice view of the city airport. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. There are, there are tremendous views down here. I have yeah. to admit, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, the point is, if I did, I would take one room aside, right, and that yeah. room that I took aside, I would dedicate to myself. Well, you can't have a building which you live in where yeah. people come and visit the locked room, which <laughs> is your museum. <laughs> no, Nobody would want to do that. No, but I like looking at it myself. I like looking at all that stuff. Really? I take pictures of it, and I put them out online. I'll tell you what the, I'm going to ask people yeah, to do. What yeah. should be in the Porky Museum? I'm going to have people tweet okay. in about that. Right. At the two mics, at yeah. Mike Perry 8, yeah. at IROMG. See, and what I don't understand is, I don't understand why people who like to, you know, remember the good things they've done in life don't have their own statue. Because my well, eventual often, ambition is yeah. to have a statue of myself outside Because you wouldn't need very much stone door. to hold it, would you? <laughs> oh, that's very would nice. Would it be life-size, you think? <laughs> yeah, life size, yeah. Or would it be special yeah. sort of gnome size for your uh, No, you idiot. It wouldn't, it would, garden. wouldn't be gnome size. Hey? It wouldn't be made out of stone anyway. What but, I, but uh, no, in all seriousness, yeah. don't you think it's a fantastic tribute that mm. uh, Manchester United are actually taking a part of, you know, the Manchester United memorabilia trail well, and all that? Well, of course they should, shouldn't they? Of course they should. Because they really scored the most goals that any Manchester United player has ever scored. Exactly. Are you going to be offering them a copy of Rooney? tunes by the way well I will I mean do you think they'd be interested well I think they should be how about the shirt that he signed for you when he supposedly saved your life Uh, well he did sign the shirt which forms uh, what about the first three chapters of your book Uh, about uh, no about Wayne Rooney no 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 how Wayne Rooney saved my life by Mark Barry no there's a picture of it there mate and I tell you it's uh, it's um, it's something I cherish and not many people have got one because of course he was very young at the time he was yeah just said get better soon Mike Wayne Uh, Wayne Rooney Wayne. Wayne Rooney Hey? Mike Wayne. No, get better soon, Mike. Yeah. Wayne Rooney. Wayne you see Rooney. what I mean? He, yeah. he actually put okay. my name in it. Now, listen, I will tell you what I'm talking about. I'll just read you a couple of tweets out. While yeah, of here. course, yeah. Uh, Martin says this uh, Affectionately, Mike Perry's making Klopp sound uh, absolutely ridiculous. He's off his head this morning. No, uh, and no. Barry says, Porky Klopp's more likely to have been on the Asbach brandy. The Asbach, yeah. Because that's uh, part of Germany he comes from, apparently. Oh, is it? Right, yeah. I've never heard of that. And Russ says, Hello, hello, Crikey Porky, your Klopp German accent is about mm. as convincing as hair flick. <laughs> yeah, well, OK, yes, hey? I suppose it is. Unbelievable. Uh, now, listen, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the cricket situation because it concerns me dreadfully. Why do you want to talk about cricket? Well, because... It's I... snowing outside, Yes, right? I know that, There's yeah. a Six Nations yeah. Championship yeah. going on, right? Yeah. England yeah. taking on Wales. Yeah. There's all sorts of fantastic rugby. Yeah. Uh, we've got a massive Premier League programme. Yes. Live on TalkSport, 12.30. Arsenal take on Hull we'll in what have. could be Arsene Wenger's last season. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Well, Why I... do you want to talk about cricket? Because it's important. Because it, if you keep up with things like I do, you'll see that Stuart Broad yesterday went to the Palace and Prince Charles uh, endowed him with an MBE. Did he? Right, so that's brilliant. So he comes out after mm. he's talking. Now, the point is, if Joe Root is made England captain at 26, yeah. it will be the ruin of him. I don't think it will. So I, I think look, it'll be the making of it. So, the making of no, a man. I think no. It's ludicrous to say uh, that Joe Root is too young to be England captain. Yes. Boris Becker won Wimbledon when he was 17, yes. right? That's uh, a one-man in, sport. In football, uh, you are considered to be getting close to being yeah. over the hill when you're 26. Totally agree. You know, Joe Root yeah. has got maybe 10 years of cricket yeah. ahead of him, yeah. uh, but certainly five top class no. years, right? Yeah. Why shouldn't he get it now? Because what should happen is, now Stuart Broad was asked about this outside Buckingham Palace itself, OK? Yeah. And, and they said, have you got any interest in the job? He said, oh, you know, let's just get on with the cricket. But yeah. it is revealed he has been um, spoken to by the cricket authorities yeah. about the possibility. Now, he would be perfect. He's getting nearer 30. Mm. He'd be perfect for the next four years. That's all an England captain does. Handing the captaincy to Joe Root when he's 30, then Joe Root can spend the next four years becoming the world's greatest ever batsman, OK? Yeah, and but that's I mean, the way it should do, happen. Why can't he do both? Well, because I think the pressures of captaincy sometimes affect the form of the man who's holding both the captaincy and the bat in his hand at the same time. No, I'm not sure about that. No. Dave says this. Has yeah. Porky been on the Red Bull Benelin cocktails this morning? No. He sounds wired. Get the defibrillator ready. No. If and I... uh, Ryan says yeah. the main attraction in the Porky Museum is a bottle of cinnamon to remind the masses how much of a plank he is. Well, I might have a copy of the, the cinnamon challenge. I might have a copy of the cinnamon challenge on the screen. Listen, I tell you who else got a, uh, an award yesterday at the Palace. Who right? else did, yeah. A guy called Craig Oliver. Craig Oliver. Uh, what a slug. Do you know slug, who he is? Craig Oliver. Yeah, what's, what does he do? He was the information chief for David Cameron. Oh, yeah. So David he's Cameron. He's Australian, isn't he? Uh, he? I think he's got antipathy and sort of anti I think he was, of, yeah, uh, think he was running some, uh, some uh, government something. office in Australia. Anyway, so... It's so not da- a very nice thing to call him. So, so David Cameron, who's probably one of the worst MP, uh, uh, prime ministers this country's ever had. He always managed to get a dig in on that, Well, he, he scrapped the Ark Royal. It used to be parked below my balcony in Portsmouth Harbour, so I've never forgiven you know, him for I that. I see a story the other day saying uh, that every single naval ship is currently being uh, fixed up at the moment, so 
we actually have technically got no navy. No, no. So if anybody wants to attack Britain, no. you know, by sea, we are completely screwed. No, what you read was that every active submarine we've got is holed up in fast lane and oh, being fine. repaired. Oh, yeah. well, that's all right. Then. Still got a few services. Oh, so in case the Russians anyway, the point of my story is. Point my story is. Point my story is. Cameron, the worst prime minister we've had You've since the Second World War, yeah, managed to shoot himself in the foot. Yeah. But yesterday, his, uh, his information chief, Craig Oliver, goes to the palace yeah. and returns What's from the palace point of the story? as Sir Craig Oliver. Sir. Sir Craig but Oliver. But if he's Australian, he can't be called Sir, can he? Yeah, they can, yeah. No, the man's a slug it. and he should never have been awarded oh, yeah, very, anything. Uh, very and when you look at the people who get the honours, you say, Stuart Broad, good. Craig Oliver slug. That's what I'm saying. Well, Scrap the honour system. I think okay? that's completely and utterly unnecessary, to be honest. It's all Now, I don't know all. what you're doing later on. There's you a lot are. of sport on today, but I mean, when yep. we get into the evening's viewing, you'll have yep. to be preparing for Porky Vision, obviously. Yes. But there's a great show I want you to watch tonight. Oh, yeah, what's uh, that? Because I have to bring your attention to it, because Nick has tweeted it to us and said, we must all watch this, right? And it is a programme going out at 7 pm, yeah. BBC Two. Yeah. Welcome to Hull, City of Culture 2017. <laughs> Now, you've That's already brilliant. got yourself into loads of trouble. We've got that yeah. Carl Turner guy doesn't yeah. speak to us anymore. No. He's the MP for Hull, right? That's doesn't right. speak to us anymore because I asked him why his expenses got up so much. Yes, that's I don't right. know why yeah. he won't answer me. And every time any of our followers try and tweet him, mm. he blocks them. And he's going to send us his expenses, isn't it? Well, to he prove was going to do that. Fiddle them. We're still waiting for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a very, very uh, loose uh, thing yeah. to say that. Well, we'll have a look at that. I see yeah. that... Um... But I quite fancy Hull this afternoon to take Arsenal, actually. Well, uh, that's not the uh, that's not the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. And you've said a few ridiculous things in your lifetime, but I mean they're they're on Absolute a pretty rubbish. poor run, aren't they? Who Hull? Uh, Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal. Are that's very what I mean. Run. And they're they're at home and they lost. Now the home only thing that worries in the me, last game the to thing, a lowly team. The only thing that worries me slightly yeah. about Arsenal today yes. is that they might decide, given what Arsene Wenger might have said or might not yeah. have said to Ian Wright yeah. about leaving at the end of the season, yeah. they might suddenly rally and decide that they want to do a favour to their Maybe. boss Maybe. because they're all getting the blame for for failing uh, Arsene Wenger. Yes. He doesn't seem to be getting the blame for not giving them a sense of. Uh, you know, winning mentality. Yeah. He's not. He's yeah. not been given a hard time for not coaching them properly. Yeah. You know, why is that? Well, the the reason why it is is there's nobody there to criticise him or otherwise. He is a one man band, as everybody has explained a million times before. Yeah, but why, you can't keep you know, blaming the players for ten years, can you? Uh, yeah, you can if they're not uh, properly motivated and if they're not put together. Yeah, but if in they're not team. properly motivated, that's his fault, isn't it? Uh, well, it's also his fault too. I mean, a team is a combination of players who work together and link together, and he hasn't done that yet, has he? Exactly. And right. until he gets that right after. Uh, is it 12 or 13 year barren spell mm. Arsenal well, don't forget about the so, FA Cups so, don't forget about the FA Cups do you know what if I'd have won two FA Cups mm. in, in like uh, what was it uh, two consecutive years yeah. that would have kept us happy for five years honestly Everton Without, yeah well, it kept us happy for about 25 years well, well we last won it in 95 but I mean, it's go. all about aspirations expectations yeah. and the point in history at which your club is in the cyclical turn of football. Cyclical yeah. turn of football. And Everton yeah. are now in the right. cyclical turn, turning towards greater things. That's why I think they'll do brilliantly well today at Middlesbrough. That's why Lou, Lou, Lou Koku mm. uh, could well knock in another half. Why don't you go and have a lie down on one of those couches? Over <laughs> no, there for no a while. I'm, not, I'm not going to have a lie down. We anyway. are the two mics. This is Talk Sport. We're at the XL. It's the warm up. <laughs> You're listening to the warm-up on Talk Sport. We're here at the XL in London for the London Affiliate Conference with Bet Safe. Now, Porky, coming yes. up very shortly, uh, we've got some very, very exciting people yeah. to talk to, but we'll tell you more are. about that in a second. Yeah. A couple of tweets for you. Uh, James says this for your museum. Cinnamon, mm. Smash, Fish Fingers, KFC, yeah, yeah. and what other culinary delights will Porky put in the museum? Hang on, what uh, about all my achievements in my business? You haven't you made know. any achievements. What, you mean yeah. closing down that internet TV station? Well, what are you on about? That's you know, what you managed the, to the do, getting fired from every newspaper in the land. Well, the newspapers and radio. You can ha- I'll have my statue there, my broadcasting. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, where'd uh, you get that from? I uh, got it from uh, the broadcasting industry. The broadcasting yeah, industry, yeah. Really, what did you get it for? Uh, being Plank top of the uh, year. No, 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 top sports <laughs> reporter of the year. Really? Yeah, absolutely. And was yeah. that for the Rugby World Cup when you didn't recognise Australia's finest ever player? Who? Despite sitting next to him for the entire, <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Campesi. Well, that wasn't my fault. He didn't tell me his name was Campesi. Really? I just knew him as Dave. Yeah, it was all right. It wasn't my fault. Now, John says you'd have a fish yeah. finger pyramid in the Porky Museum. Yeah. Now, I've got some very exciting news for you. Yes. And it may well be uh, relevant to the guys we're about to speak to in a moment. Oh, right? yes. Uh, do you know that in a Japanese restaurant chain at the moment, for the simple price of around about 65 pence, right. you can have all you can drink in 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you imagine trying to do that? Well, do you have to, have to drink sake, though? No, you, you can drink anything you want. What? All you can drink in 10 minutes. Well, so I go in with my 65p and yeah. I say, can I have three bottles of Pinot yeah. Grigio, please? And, and they stick a clock on you, Yeah. right? And yeah. then after 10 minutes, if yeah. you want to give another drink, you have to mm. give another 65p. <laughs> How much can you drink is, in 10 where minutes? Is it, where is this happening? It's in Japan. Oh, in Japan, right? OK. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a, what's called a casual steak joint yeah. called Volks. 
Yeah. Well, so I presume they've got what like is the catch? What they, is the catch? There's no catch. There must be a catch. No, it's like when you go into a place for happy hour. Mm. That's happy hour, right? But this yeah. is a happy ten minutes. Yeah, but Japanese how much people, get down Japanese your neck people in 10 have very strange drinking habits, don't they? I mean, so. You well, know. how do you know? Well, You've never been to Japan. <laughs> no, I haven't been to Japan. No. You've never even been to a Japanese restaurant. No, I haven't actually. I wouldn't go. So to what Japanese you know about Japan, you could literally to, fill to, a bag to, of a postage stamp. I wouldn't go to a Japanese restaurant because I don't like the idea of drink of eating raw fish. You don't want to take your shoes off, do you? No matter. Well, not after seeing that film that Johnny Depp was in when they. Beat the manager to death, and knocked all his teeth out in the sink. Yeah, it's a family show. This, you know. take his, uh, anyway, his listen. Shoes enough off. of that. By the way, did you see today? I saw the first uh, big talk by Nicker Rosberg oh, yeah. since he stood down. Oh, this as, is a man uh, that you called a massive loser. Well, I'm for, sorry, uh, but, I, but I, having, having read what Formula he's one after becoming world champion, having read what he's got to say now, I think there should be at the you know the annual uh, sports awards and all that. There should be a an award for you know the the man who threw it all away or the or the loser or something like that. Because one of the reasons he gave it up was he wants to learn how to play the guitar. And he says, it's learning to play the guitar, for instance, that is an example of why I stop. Yeah. You need to be in one place for a while to be with your teacher mm. and get into a rhythm. Yeah. That's well, a ridiculously wrong? small what's example. Wrong? What's there wrong? are bigger things in life, but that's what I felt yeah. like. Well, don't forget, as we had the argument yeah. many times when he did re- actually retire, yeah. he's in a very dangerous sport, right? Uh, you know, fr- friends and colleagues of his yeah. have suffered terrible injuries. Yeah. A couple of them have even died uh, as a result of Yeah, but accidents. Schumacher didn't. No, but hang on. People have all had terrible accidents in Formula One, right? No, the fewer and fewer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Accidents. The point is, very, is that, you know, he's, got a young, he's got a young family. Uh, he has, of course, uh, got plenty of other things going on. Yep. And in the end, yep. he's perfectly entitled to take some time off and play the guitar, play with his kid yep. and have a good time. And okay. I have absolutely nothing but what he, good wishes for him. Wh- what he says is that uh, to stay at the top, the amount of detail you have to have in your life is, is, is minuscule uh, arrangements, minuscule facts. Like, for instance, he gave up it's cycling. It's time, by the way. He gave up, so don't worry about the time. Let me give you this very quickly. He gave oh, up cycling because it reduced the weight of one of his muscles on his thigh by a point one of a kilogram, which meant the car went three hundredths of a second faster yeah. by losing that bit of weight yeah. on his leg yeah. when he won one of his races. No wonder your car goes so slowly. That explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for this. Now, we've got lots and lots of tweets, but we haven't got time to do them right here. We're going to do them after the news because uh, lots of people have got things to say about your uh, cricket suggestion, uh, which most of them think is an absolute load of old No, I've had a lot of support from that in the cricket world. I don't see any coming up. Now, uh, this, of course, is the one-minute moan. That's it. Uh, This is where you have a go and I have a go for one minute only. That's right. If you go over, you immediately disqualify yourself. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Listen out for the alarm. Yes. Listen out for the clock. Okay. And when you're ready to go with your one-minute moan, then by all means, off you go. Right, well, I'll let you go first. Oh, you'll let me go first. I'll let you you start the clock. I will start the clock for you. Guys, are you ready? I'll give you a countdown. Three, two, one, and then uh, MG will go off. So it's three, two, one. Now, if there's anything that has been riling me and lots and lots of people, it's, it's as a result of my moan from last week about your ridiculous warning that t- there was going to be shortages of courgettes, yeah. shortages of spinach, yeah. shortages of all sorts of vegetables, there's right? There's no shortages as a result, of lettuce seeds. Well, people talk about lettuce seeds. I've never seen a lettuce seed. Yeah. I don't expect to ever see yeah. one. But I've got a real shortage for you, yeah. and I'm going to have a moan about the Icelandic fishing fleet. Do you know why? Why? Because the Icelandic fishing fleet have mm. all gone on strike. Do you know <laughs> oh, what that really? means? No. It means when you go to your fish and chip shop, yeah. as you regularly do twice a day, yes. between now and next Saturday, yeah. so that'll be, you know, 14 loads of fish and chips for you, yeah. it's going to cost you a lot more money because Cod and Haddock is going up by 40%. There's people in Grimsby being laid off yeah, I've because heard there's all this not before. enough fish coming in. Rubbish. You have not heard it all before. Yeah. This is a genuine strike yeah. from the Icelandic fishing fleet. Why are they on you, strike? Because they're not happy about the amount of money they're getting because of Brexit. They're not happy because of the amount of money they're getting because the Icelandic krona the is fluctuating. The world. No, it's not. It went bankrupt a few years ago. Yeah, but anyway, this is my one minute moan, not yours. Okay, so stop on. interrupting me. Get on That's it. it. Okay, okay, right, okay. Right, okay, well, that was uh, uh, very ready, average. Are you ready to give? Well, don't let me just remind you yes. uh, that I think I'm winning this by about 6-1. <laughs> I don't think moment. you are. Uh, think but you Ross are. will yeah. decide exactly who yeah. is going to win this one. Okay. It's time for your one-minute moan, starting now. Right, my one-minute moan is on bottles of mouthwash and the cellophane wrapper that they put round the neck of it because it is impossible to get it off. Now, this, no, has, plank. this has been bugging me for nigh on 30 years. You buy a bottle, well, you've been trying to get it off yeah, for 30 years. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have. I you, you, you buy a bottle of plastic mouthwash, right, and it's, it's got like a plastic, plastic top. mouthwash. Now, there's always this salivane wrap around the top, uh-huh. okay? And it has a little white arrowed uh, line down, which you're supposed to... usually red. So, 
No, it's it's white. Uh, I, I I buy the uh, the blue mouthwash, and, yeah. it's, and it's a white one. Now, Is there no any ma- other kind? No, no matter what you do, I've broken nails. I've got frustrated. I've bent the neck off the bottle, <laughs> and only this well, week. Saw it off. Only, well, I did this week. I had to go and get my bread knife out of the kitchen, <laughs> and I had to saw into the cellophane because it is so. Is this re- what happens when you get back yeah. to the pub? No, this happens in the mornings or when I come out the shower or before I go in the shower. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I'm telling you. It is. It, I'm telling you. <laughs> it is almost impossible to get that cellophane off. I'm sure millions will sympathise with me. I would say that's probably another win for me. Ross, not, not uh, at all, will tell not us, at all. Ross will tell us. No, very, no, no. Ross right. will tell us very shortly. Okay, who's won it? That's a silent majority problem. Oh, there's no millions time. Millions of people have the same problem. This is Talk Sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm up with the two mics on Talk Sport. This ain't no disco. window, uh, if there was a window here at the XL, you'd have to say that song does not conjure up what we're seeing out here. A bit of snow, a bit no. of sleet, no. uh, uh, you know, very, very misty, it certainly uh, doesn't. not much of a distance of a view, but that is all yeah. about LA, it really reminds me of LA. Well, it is, a- of course, Cheryl Crow, right? Cheryl Crow, she's 55 today. Is she? Now, the antecedents of Cheryl Crow, of course, are that she used to be married to Lance Armstrong, She certainly she? did, yes. And Lance Armstrong, probably one of the most notorious sportsmen of the modern era. You'd have to say that, yes. You'd have to. I think she was rather disappointed when she discovered the truth. Well, I'm, I'm sure she would have been. Yeah. But I, have the you re- got Cheryl Crow's greatest hits in the Porky collection? No, she's only ever made one decent song, and that's that one that no, we just played. No, that's not true. She's done no. loads of great songs. No, 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 that's the only decent one. But I'll tell you why that's particularly poignant on her 55th birthday. Why? When that came out, right, yeah. I was in L.A. staying with a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours. Oh, you yeah. know, I was just over there for a couple of weeks, and, uh, and uh, it was near uh, Venice Beach, OK? OK. So anyway, the phone started going mad, because guess what happened whilst I was there? Mm. Uh, the great defender of truth and justice and free speech, old Hugh What's-His-Name. Hugh actor, What's-His-Name? You know, Hugh Hefner? Hugh, no, 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 the actor. Hugh you know, Grant. Hugh Grant, yeah. Hugh Grant had suddenly been found in a car oh, yeah. uh, with a lady of the night. Divine uh, Brown, was it? Uh, Divine Brown, yeah. absolutely right. Mm. And do you know what? It's a family I, show, this, by the way. It is a family show, yeah. but I spent the next couple of days yeah. helping out my friend who worked for a national newspaper oh, yeah. by driving up and down Santa Monica... Uh, was it Sunset Boulevard? Uh, and Sunset Boulevard, yeah. all of them, right. and nailing pictures of Divine Brown on all the wooden <laughs> lampposts because they had some wooden uh, telegraph poles in there yeah. saying, you know, $50,000 reward... Do you know this woman? Because I've been known to you, she'd already been squired away by another Sunday newspaper. Somebody taken her, uh, to, San taken her to San Francisco out of That's the way right. from people like you. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, we're going to get a view uh, in a moment on who should have won uh, the one minute moment. Well, haven't we got it Pete, by now? Hang on, Pete says obvious? this Porky defeated by child proof safety feature on a bottle of mouthwash. <laughs> that pretty <laughs> no. much says it all. I can't <laughs> believe <laughs> that you could possibly win that. Yeah. Well, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Yeah, I have won it. Have you announced that I've won it? No, you have not won it. I have not had that information. So I'm not able to impart that to anybody. Yes. But what I am able to tell you uh, yeah. is that from the Sunday Times, I'm delighted to say, yeah. uh, we have the foreign editor, Mr. Peter Conradi Excellent. here. Excellent. Peter, yeah. a very good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank Hi, you very Pete. much again for joining us. Now, we My are pleasure. down in a very, uh, very busy, busy place called the XL um, uh, sort of convention centre down here. And uh, we're a bit further east from where you are at the moment at the Shard. But, but uh, how's the old uh, Sunday Times looking for tomorrow? What you got for us? Well, we've got, as, as ever, we've got lots of stuff. Um, my particular bit of the Sunday Times is obsessed, again, as ever, with, with, with Donald Trump. Um, yeah, what would you do without him? I don't know, actually. I mean, <laughs> we, we sort of struggled along in the past, but since the Donald's been there, it's just been one great story yeah. after another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this week he's been sort of channeling Kim Jong-un, hasn't he? You know, anything you read that's not good about me is fake. Exactly, exactly, and, and uh, that, that, is, that is his style. I mean, there's some wonderful visual stuff from him, obviously great for radio. Um, mm. I don't know if you've seen this, this sort of handshake with the Japanese Prime Minister, no. um, Abe, who was over there. Well, basically, he was giving a press conference with him, and uh, the, someone in the audience, one of the photographers, called out, you know, shake his hand, shake his hand. And, I mean, Donald just grabbed him by the arm, and it <laughs> took 19 seconds 
Um, they were kind of going up, they were going down, they were going left, they were going in and out. And, you know, oh. at the end of it, Abe's expression was absolutely, absolutely priceless. Well, he's, he's got this problem, hasn't he, about not being able to go up and down stairs and talk at the same time, <laughs> which you can put your own interpretation on. Uh, Pete, listen, uh, on the Donald Trump thing, now my spies on the continent tell me that Holland has now become a raging cesspit of sort of populism and that they're going to be the next to say, let's get out of Europe. And a raging cesspit uh, of populism? Yes, yeah, populism. Where that from? Well, it is. I mean, Pete, you know about this. This guy apparently who's going to win the uh, election in, in Holland is a bit of a playboy and follows the Donald Trump route. Well, exactly. I mean, there are lots of, there are lots of interesting elections going on uh, this year in Europe. The first sure. one is going to be in, in Holland next month. Uh, the guy you're probably referring to is a guy called Heert Wilders. That's who's him. Got almost as crazy hair as Donald Trump has got. That's right, that's right yeah. Um, Somebody tried to kill him a few years ago, didn't they? No, they killed, there was another one. There was a former, a former right-wing, uh, very right-wing leader they had, um, and he was actually, they successfully killed him. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, very nasty yeah. indeed. I've never, uh, I've never heard it quite put in that way. <laughs> successfully no, no, killed I mean, him. Really, yeah. really, really tragic case. I mean, a, a nutter yeah. shot him. It was tragic, um, particularly his family. Yeah, it was very tragic. Um, yeah, but the, yeah. the, this guy, there have been attempts to kill him as well. He's, he's uh, been involved in all sorts of controversial court cases. And it does yeah. look as if he, his party is going to become the, the biggest party in the elections in March. I mean, it doesn't mean to say he's going to become prime minister because yeah. they have a lot of political parties there and they always sure. have coalitions and no one else really wants to uh, get into bed with him, as it were. But it's, no. it's, quite, it's quite a wake-up call because we always think of the, about, about the Dutch being very kind of liberal. Very liberal. On all Don't sorts you? of things. But, yeah. um, you know, there's a bit of a groundswell and a lot of people have had enough. Well, I think it all went wrong in, in Holland, Pete, when they started banning people going into the cafes to smoke the funny fags. Yeah, but they, well, they rescinded that, didn't they? Well, uh, yeah, they? that still goes, it still goes on, doesn't it? I mean, it's, Does I, it? I think it's, uh, you know, they've been, they, for a long time, they've been, you know, had a big kind of open door policy on immigration. Yep. Um, and, as I said, lots of very, very liberal social policies. But there's a, yep. a lot of tension there with immigration, some of the members of the immigrant community. And, uh, right. you know, it's, it's all turning quite, you know, very un-Dutch, really. Yeah, I, no, I totally agree. It is very un-Dutch. And, I yep. mean, I suppose the big story here... Uh, has all been about what's going on in the House of Commons politically, yeah. the whole Brexit scenario. Will the House of um, Lords overturn how many, it? How many people on Twitter is Diane Abbott going to block in a week? You know, all that kind of thing. <laughs> it has indeed. I mean, that, but that is going to rumble on and on and on and on, isn't it, really? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it, one of the big issues, I think, is what's going to happen to the huge numbers of uh, people that weren't born here who actually, who actually live in Britain. I mean, with the prospect of the, sort of the House of Lords amendment which would give them the right to stay and I think you know a lot of people who have lived here for a long time who were born in other countries elsewhere in Europe do feel very very strongly yeah. about it and I mean as far as your newspapers are your, yours in particular obviously Peter but others as well I mean does, is there a kind of overload of Brexit that, 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 that people feel in the sense that you know is it hard to keep people interested in it even though quite important things are happening it's difficult to, to, to sort of engage with members of the public about it isn't it I, th I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, honestly, if you open a newspaper in the morning, you know, you are, is the latest on the Brexit negotiations the first thing you turn to? Not, not necessarily. I mean, it, it's, 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 you know, it's the case with lots of things, you know, there, it's a serious issue. So you've got to find ways of uh, doing it in, a, in, in an entertaining way. Often that, you know, that often involves personalities. Um, but, you know, fundamentally, it's, it's our future, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, Pete, tell me this. One of the most controversial characters in the House of Commons, of course, is the Speaker, John Burko. Mm. I met him not so long ago at an Everton Arsenal game. He's, he's about the same height as you. He's, uh, he's smaller than me. He's a big Arsenal fan. I'm an Everton fan. I mean, this man has caused uproar. Is he safe in his, in his uh, illustrious seat or is he going to get the boot? Oh, I don't know. He's been. I mean, it's, it's it's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, he's a Tory, but the Tories all hate him. Um, yeah, that's right. They do. Well, the Labour MPs want him to stay. I know. It's all it's, it's all back to front, isn't it? I, you know, your guess really is as good as mine whether he's yes. gonna, whether he's going to hang on or not. Um, I, I, I know that just to sort of to, to steer this back to my own kind of area of expertise, you know, the, the business about him trying to uninvite. Trump uh, yeah. hasn't gone yeah. down terribly well in America. No, that's right. Uh, where they don't like that kind of slight very much. So we'll have to no, see, they... uh, see how that plays out, really. No, exactly yeah, we, right. We don't know much about his wife lately, do we? She's gone very quiet. She, she, she has. I mean, she, is in it. she has had an extraordinary period, hasn't she? When you remember yes. those photographs of her? I'm sure everyone remembers those yeah, photographs. Yeah, covered oh, only by a curtain. Uh, then there was the, the stuff down at the Ministry of Sound yeah, as well. It certainly was. 
Yes, they, they make an interesting couple, I think. They certainly do. Indeed. Now, Indeed. Uh, you've always got somebody to cheer us up in this miserable weather. Yeah, you've come got on, some cheer kind us of, up. Uh, a travel supplement about, you know, the most expensive place to go in the world that none of us can afford. <laughs> we've got we've got plenty we've got plenty of that yeah but I think well, well, what's the, the, the feel good story is the is the whales this morning isn't it the rescued the rescued well have whales we rescued the them down chain? in New Zealand yeah I yes. hope so I hope so well why don't you let him tell us well have they well uh, sorry have they have they have they been rescued well I mean some of them have been but some of the other ones don't seem to want to be rescued and they seem to well, have some they're kind all of dead. whale Most death of them are wish, dead. I think. Yeah, that's, that's not a very uplifting story. Thanks, Dead Wilkie. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Peter Conradi there from the Sunday Times Foreign Desk uh, saying that there is yeah. some uplifting stories around no, out there. No, they're all dead, uh, the They're whales. not all dead. They're going to die so because ghastly. their lungs collapse on them. Would I know about whales. Would you stop being so ghastly and, and lacking in empathy, <laughs> compassion and everything else that makes you into the ghastly individual that you are? Now, I'm having to say uh, there's a fantastic individual who has just uh, come by uh, over where we are, and that's yeah. Harry Redknapp. He's going to be joining us uh, in about half an hour's time, Porky. So, yes, that's so excellent. Put your friendly hat on and stop growling at people. Right, OK. Now, listen, I've got some fantastic uh, responses. Oh, I, yeah. uh, just to announce officially, I won the one-minute moan, by the way. Yeah, you no, seem to I be have not had that answer. information. Well, hang on. I'm looking, not, out, I'm looking over to I the adjudicator. Not had that information. Who is the adjudicator pointing uh, at? Ross Bellamy is our producer. Yeah, and he's pointing he at... seems to be pointing at you. No, thank you very much I indeed. I don't know why yeah. he's pointing yeah, thank at you. you. Now, my moan what was... What a complete plank he must be. My moan was the fact that the the cellophane wrap around the neck of a bottle of mouthwash... I'm going to put cellophane wrap around your neck in a no violence, please. It's a not violent. Show. Is that you can't get it off. Now, you won't believe how no, I've hit not for a, the first time. A, a, a massive uh, sore point here for the country. For instance, Darren really? says, um, hang on. Oh, yes. No, with, all, with all the enemies that uh, old Porky what? must have made in the past few years, yeah. we learn his biggest foe of all is a bottle of mouthwash. Yeah. And how is that supportive of you exactly? How about this one? Because it follows on from Steve, who says, yeah. Porky wins the moan, real everyday problems from the true man of the people really? who helps make our daily slog a bit easier. He's sending that for the asylum. Uh, no. Villa Rich says, Porky's one minute moment is embarrassing today. MG wins hands down. Rubbish. Uh, Big Cheese says, Porky's travails yeah. are as snobby as he is. Yeah. Mouthwash problems. What next? Yeah. Is Butler going? Going on strike, yeah. Well, um, and here's one from Tom who says, yes. Clearly, Porky's never used the mouthwash, yes. as just about everything he says is utter garbage. Well, <laughs> well uh, somebody sent in very helpfully a picture of a, b- a bottle of Colgate Plax uh, mouthwash, and they've particularly highlighted the, the instructions. Are available the instructions, but there's another great one here. I'm you surprised see, you don't get yours from cost cutter. You see, you see, your interpretation of what well, why don't you just use the Red Bull that you drank the night before? Your interpretation of the uh, state of the economy in Iceland is, of course, way off again. No, it's not. Uh, well, here are, there's a, an Icelandic guy here called Kayamin, right? That's Kaya an Icelandic Min. name, yeah, Kayamin. And he says... That's em- an Irish name. No, no, I mean, no, it's no, not no. pronounced like that. No, no, it's, it's an uh, Irish name. It's, How do you spell it? It's Icelandic. I'm not spelling it's it. It's CAO, isn't uh, it? And, and it says, MG is wrong about the Icelandic kroner. Last year, one pound was 200 Icelandic kroner. Yeah. And this year... Uh, it is 139. That's a Mars bar. That yeah. shows yeah, but the Icelandic economy improving. No, it's not actually, it is. because what that means is. is that you can get, uh, you have to pay out more krona uh, to get pounds, right? Mm. Which means that for the export industry, yep. that is terribly, terribly bad yeah, news, yeah, right? You, you so uh, we've got lots more coming up, of course, including Harry Redknapp. Yes. Harry Redknapp uh, is coming up a little bit later on uh, in the show. Yeah. Um, here's one from. Uh, let's see. Um, where are we, Martin? Yes. Um, who says to? Oh no, no, I don't want to do that one because yeah. I can't read that one. No, I've got a picture uh, here. Andrew I'll, says yes. this. Once Porky evolves a little and gets used to his opposable thumbs, mm. he should be able to open the mouthwash. Yeah, well, it's it's almost impossible to open. It's been a bane in my life for years. Now, very kindly, Paul, who is a correspondent of ours, right? You know, we were talking in our most recent show about uh, moons, all sorts of moons. Yeah, I was going to ask you, actually, whether yeah. you saw the... Uh, the, the beige the, moon. The, well, no, yeah, because it was a, moon, a lunar eclipse last yeah, night. Yeah, it was, yeah. Did you I, see it? No, I didn't see it last night, no, at all. Now, what I was going to say to you was mm. that uh, Paul, very kindly, is over in Chicago. Oh, yeah. And he sends a fantastic... Oh, I um, saw that a bit earlier with your face Yeah, that's here, right. right. Fantastic landscape of Chicago. The, uh, the Sears Roebuck building in the background, which is now called something else. And he says, no uh, clear skies last night here in Chicago, but some great pics of the beige moon. And then he shows uh, a moon with my face right and he calls it, very unkindly, the loon in the moon. Yeah, well, I mean, that's I can very, understand why we say that. Not very politically correct. Yeah. Stepto says, Porky getting through a chat about politics in Holland yes. without attempting a shocking Dutch accent was a long shot, <laughs> oh. uh, but incredibly he didn't do it. And I Scottish, saw uh, a mouse. Yeah. 
We're talking where politics about where Holland, Rundish not has. Louis van Gaal. <laughs> uh, right, Scottish yeah. Bull says, what a plank pork is. Mm. Cheryl Crow mm. has had eight number one singles, sold 30 million albums worldwide, and amassed a fortune of over 40 million quid. Um, this uh, is a woman you describe as a one-hit wonder. Well, she was a one-hit wonder in this country. She might have had eight number ones That's in America. Ridiculous. She didn't have eight number ones here. Absolutely ridiculous. She didn't have eight number ones here, mate. Uh, I always thought she was uh, a bit uh, sort of dilettante, if you see what I mean. What do you know mean? what I mean? Well, can I, I couldn't work Do you out. You know how she started out? No, she was a backing singer for Michael Jackson. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did know that? Well, I, I kind of do you, now that you reminded you me. You've okay? forgotten about. But I still, do, I still don't remember uh, these, these eight number ones. Mm. But I do remember being in in LA when that record came out, and uh, it's a cherished memory. Yes. Um, now then, now I've been accused of being anti-English just because I yeah, said I have, think yeah. Wales are going to beat England yeah, yeah. down well, at well, uh, uh, the Principality Stadium. Well, you're always, you're, al- you're always doing that, aren't you? How you, about this from uh, Dan the Joker? Yeah. He says uh, this is directed at me. Is it true that, Peter, that the Peter Fallow character in Bonfire of the Vanities yeah. was based on you, or is it just an urban myth? On you? Yeah. Well, on uh, Michael Graham. We're Michael Graham, about. that is me. Yes. Uh, have you read that book? Yeah, of course, I've read it. And what does this guy do in the book? Well, he is actually, as far as I un- un- understand it, yes. uh, he is loosely based on Anthony Hayden. Guest, oh, yes, you right, might yeah. remember, yeah. Uh, who is, of course, the brother yeah. of Lord Guest, who is now married to the woman from Trading Places. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Jamie. 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 Jamie Curtis. Jamie Curtis, yes. daughter of Tony Curtis. That's right, yeah. So, Jamie um, Lee Curtis, actually. Uh, that's right, yeah. Yes. So, uh, so Dan, I'm sorry I'm sorry to say, I mean, it yeah. would be nice if you Peter Fallon character, who was a bit of a sort of a louche, yes. you'd have to say, yeah. lounge lizard type. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, it could have been based on me, yeah, it uh, but it was more likely, in fact, yeah. that it was based yeah. on Anthony Hayden Guest. I, I think Anthony Hayden... was a friend of Tom Wolfe's as well. He was a friend of Tom Wolfe's. I think Anthony Hayden Guest... Was the guy who? Do you remember an old colleague in uh, in America who was the he was known as the doyen of the uh, New York uh, British press right, mm. called Brian Vine. Brian Vine. Who then Anthony Hayden Guest said, "Can I interview you for yeah. my magazine, Brian?" Oh, yes, the New York magazine. Yeah, yes. New York magazine. And that was so, the end of his career. <laughs> well, so Brian said, "Yes, of course you can." So Brian went and bought a monocle and had a picture of himself leaning on the the, the mantelpiece of yeah. a gentleman's club in the middle of New York. Proceeded to tell Anthony Hayden Guest about his string of racehorses yeah. on Fire Island. No, the house was on the Fire house Island. On fire the racehorses weren't on Fire the, Island. The, the racehorses were up at Syracuse, That's you right. know, the speedboat, yeah. the two homes they the had. The yacht. The yacht, his wife's fur coat. His son's private school his fees. His son's private school fees. Yeah. And then when the new editor, Sir Larry Lamb, mm. took over in London and yeah. found this magazine lying on his desk and read it, he closed the bureau he down. He did, and recalled him. Prime yeah. line, recalled him, and, and, and smashed his life to pieces yeah. because he was actually having a better life than the editor of the paper he worked he for. He was indeed. Not, but, uh, I mean, not a, good, not a good bit of a career. No, uh, it was a very bad career that. move. Now, Madge says this. Uh, Hi, guys. Is it possible to say a happy 70th birthday to my dad, Terfel, please? He's listening in and loves the show. What's his name? Uh, Terfel. Terfel? Yeah. A very happy 70th birthday, my friend. That's a great old age to get to. I'm not sure I'll ever get there because only one third of my heart works. How long have you got to go to to get to 70? uh, Well over a decade. Well over a decade? I've only just entered early middle age. Oh, is that right? uh, But uh, I hope you're still enjoying life, mate. Hope you've got at least another decade. Actually, you shouldn't talk about that about people, should you really? (laughs) Well, I mean, unfortunately, you do manage to upset people the more uh, you talk. I think so. The more you say, the more you upset people. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. Now, listen, every time I see a politician stand up and mention the word football, right? I know what they're full of. They're full of self-aggrandisement. Yes. They know the football is the most popular game in the world. They know that fans have a lot to moan about because fans have to put up with an awful lot in the modern world of football. Yeah. Expensive, difficult to get to, sometimes put upon by their clubs and that sort of thing. So what do they do? They suddenly pipe up, I'm going to save football, I'm going to fight for the fan. But they very rarely do. And the latest guy, of course, is this Damien Collins chap, OK? Yeah. And, I mean, what is he doing? He's chairman of the Culture, of the culture Media and Sports Select Committee. Yes. And he's issuing all these this threats. This is where Greg Clark went, uh, the head of the oh, FA, on Thursday of last week. Uh, right? um, unbelievable. Yeah. And, and what I most hate, Mike, is this expression that they always use, football is in the last chance saloon. Oh, yeah. They don't get their act together. Oh, so David Mellor said that, didn't he, first? Well, well uh, David Mellor said that about everything. Yeah. In the last chance saloon. The trouble is that David Mel was then exposed to have some frailties which politicians seem to have mm. which don't make him fit or fit for purpose yes. to lecture to anybody else about how they run their business, no, indeed. including football. Indeed. Can I tell you there's nothing wrong with football in this country? The people in football can't Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't necessarily say there's nothing wrong with football, yep. but there's certainly nothing wrong with football that can be fixed by a politician. Th- that is exactly what I would have said if yeah. I'd have had the time you interrupted no. well, me. Well, you see, this is the difference between you and I. Yeah. You just make yeah. stupid, bland <laughs> statements, That's whereas I harsh. actually get to the heart 
part of the yeah, matter. Yeah. Now, I've got one more message for you. Oh, yeah. uh, this is from Adrian, who says, mm. uh, this is a guy who came to our show in the Edinburgh Festival oh, yes. with his lovely girlfriend, Claire. Oh, yes. He says, can you please give a shout-out to my lovely girlfriend, Claire, who is visiting me in hospital instead of going off to a beach in Bali, uh, getting ready for her birthday. OK, Claire is visiting who in hospital? Uh, Adrian. Adrian, Adrian. Yeah. Well, listen, mate, hope it all goes well for you there. Uh, quite frankly, if I had the... Uh, the option of visiting somebody in hospital, going to Bali, I'd, I'd probably go to Bali. Yeah, but, but that's why you live on your own. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, by the way, harsh, uh, I did yeah. say before yeah. this all got underway, this entire uh, thing, I did say before we all got underway, yeah. that basically yeah. uh, we, what we should do is yeah. give people a decent guide to how yes. exactly uh, to eat for ta table for one, Sam Allardyce style, yes. as you saw him being pictured at uh, Nando's. Yeah. Where I, are the best places to go well, uh, so that you don't actually look like a complete plank? I, I wouldn't know, mate, because uh, that's all a myth, as you well know. If I ever have to dine out on my own, I dine in decent restaurants. Is okay? that right? And I very, I well, dine when was the last time you were in a decent restaurant? I've been to plenty, plenty of decent restaurants. I thought the I, whole point I, of your existence was to go to Weatherspoons as often as possible, which no, is no bad thing, no, no, because you happen to no, like it, right? because you're a snob and you think Weatherspoons is for people that you wouldn't want to mix with. I That's don't. not true. I like to get on with the people, OK? That is not true at all. Now, now uh, here we go here. There's one here. I hope Porky's going to catch his hometown team get stuffed at Gateshead FC today. It's live on BT. Do you know what? Well, would that mean that it's uh, Chester. That's Chester that it's Chester. It's, uh, Why it's, are you advertising it, another broadcasting well, network on I, Top Sport? Uh, well, I'm not. That I'm doesn't not seem like the right thing to do. No, no, uh, just, Freddie, I prefer just, uh, no. his tweet. Which yeah, says, erase that, please. Is the yeah. fat man out on another unmoderated bladderation expedition tonight when he'd be <laughs> losing his phone and spilling beer all over people again? <laughs> well, funny enough, hey? I did visit that uh, establishment within the last couple of days just to put things straight with everybody and yes. everything is fine. Okay. In fact, in fact, in fact, you know, sometimes in your own head you feel a situation was worse than it really was yes well I can tell you it was yeah. in my own head it was right. as it was by the way are you enjoying happened. all these people queuing behind you not to get really. a picture with Harry Redknapp not, not really I mean, do you want some help there because they keep some, putting uh, their empty bottles yeah I saw on that my, yeah, I thought it was going to be a bit of a conflagration so I just swapped them away you know <laughs> that was the problem yeah. how about this one from uh, uh, Mr Shaw yeah. uh, who's seen the picture that we've tweeted out yes. at the two mics yes. right? uh, because we are down here at the XL yes. uh, MG makes an effort casual suit uh, Porky on the other hand dressed like a tramp again no, Hashtag no, purple no. tramp trousers. No, people are going to recognise. I mean, I'm dressed properly. People are going to recognise soon that whenever we go anywhere formal, you seem to put the same uh, dull grey suit on. Is that Incorrect. the only one you've got left? No, I've got several grey suits. Is that the only one you've got left? No, I've got several grey suits, right? So you've got, I'm wearing uh, a very fine pair of, uh, of Chelsea boots, well, if you don't mind. You see, I'm wearing, wearing a beautiful shirt. So you've got you, know, you, on the other hand, as our, our yeah. friend Mr Paul there said, no, no. Uh, look like a tramp. No, no, I don't look like a tramp at all. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the definition. The definition of smart casual, believe me. Smart casual. Smart casual. What sort of shoes have you got? I, uh, have you I, got those Sainsbury's boots on again? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've got my uh, I've got my suede loafers. Unbelievable. Well, you've got suede loafers on. In fact, no, I've, I've just got noticed. suede boots on. Harry Redknapp's got suede loafers on as well. Oh, Harry Redknapp's yeah. a very stylish man. That's right. I agree. You, on the other hand, are yeah. not. Yeah, I don't agree. Mm. Um, um, uh, Mr. Chilly says, it's yes. snowing at the Emirates. I'm surprised Arsene Wenger hasn't asked for the match to be cancelled. <laughs> yeah, well, Actually, normally they close it yes. down if it's too uh, frosty outside on the pavement, don't it, they? Yes. If you're listening to the warm-up on Talk Sport, we are the two mics, of course, and there will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. I'm delighted to say uh, that we are now joined by one of the legends of football, Mr. Mm. Harry Redner. Very good, good morning to you, Harry. How are you, boys? How are you doing? Yeah, good very well indeed, Harry. Great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Mm. Now, the news at the moment is all about management, isn't it? Of course it's not it really so much about the footballers themselves. We've got Arsene Wenger saying that, you know, this could be his last season at Arsenal. Uh, yeah. We've got uh, problems up at Middlesbrough with Karanka saying he didn't get money. Up at Rangers, nobody knows what's going on. A couple of people have tweeted me today and said Harry how do you fancy the Rangers job good club Mike what a good football club that is one of the great clubs in world football mm. you know sleeping giant really it's uh, that would be an interesting job for someone it would wouldn't it because a long way from uh, from where it you is are. a long way yeah but uh, <laughs> are the uh, of the managers Harry moved into the same sort of area now that we describe players as being and that is that they're mercenaries they'll yeah. go wherever the money is of is, course is, is mess. there's mean, no loyalty is there there's no loyalty the only people that are loyal Mike as you know are supporters yeah. the rest of everybody else is people and, managers and, they get a better offer they move players always looking for uh, a better a better and do we have to accept that now as a pro well that's the way it is yeah for sure I mean you, when I came into the game you joined a football club and you stayed there until the manager wanted to get rid of you yeah you, you know in them days players stayed at a club 10-15 yeah. years yes that was a regular thing most of the, you know, the, the, when you leave, it's because the manager calls you and said, look, you know, we've got an offer. 
I've got somebody else I'm going to bring in. I wouldn't let you go or something. Yeah. Other than that, you never thought about moving. You, no. didn't, you didn't. You didn't go to your club and think, well, I'm going to have two years in. I'm going to go and move to Man sure. United or somewhere. You sure. stayed there, and that was how sure. it was. I and mean, when you were at West Ham, Harry, you know, Billy Bonds preceded yeah. you. Then was you, uh, Frank Lampard, senior. A collection of people who'd been associated with West Ham, but then the management team at West Ham. That doesn't happen a lot these days, does it? No, I mean the managers at West Ham in them days. I think Ron Green. Uh, Ted Fenton was something like 18, 20 years. Ron Greenwood, 20 odd years as Absolutely. manager. John Lyle, 18 years. It, they, they had about five managers in something like 50, 60 years. Exactly. Incredible, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like very, very rare now to find a player that stays at one club for his entire career, like John yeah. Terry, uh, you know, mm. Ryan Giggs, that kind of thing. I mean, it's all changing, isn't it, Harry? Yeah. But, but is it changing again as well? Because we're now seeing the bigger bigger name managers all coming to the Premier League and seeing people like Sergio Aguero maybe uh, on his way out of the Premier League because some young kids come in from Brazil. Yeah, I mean, the, the sad thing about it, Mike, is that yeah, there's a young kid come from Brazil. Man City spend millions and millions and millions. They've got mm. the most incredible academy, the facilities. Yeah. When are they going to get a player? When are we going to get a player come mm. and get in the first team? Mm. Chelsea. They've got how many players out on loan? Yeah. All these kids. When's the last player Chelsea really produced? John Terry? Yeah. You know, the big kids come in and they say, well, Zuma, yeah, he's played 10, 15, 20 games. Mm. When's anyone really a step? They, it's, they, make, they spend all this money, yet still the kids don't ever, and they've just stuck a couple of kids in. Well, Tom Davis, I was going to say. Look, look how well yeah. he's done. Yeah. Give them yeah. the opportunity to play, yeah. and they can do it. But we don't. We overlook them. Mm. I go to Man City the other week, they play Tottenham. Yeah. Injuries galore, Man City. What do they, they end up playing people out of position mm. rather than them? I thought they must have a kid in the academy, surely, who can come in and give someone a go, but they don't do well, it. Well, I read this morning that Manchester United have got 60 scouts around the world whose job is to find young players who haven't yet been discovered. I mean, you know, as you quite rightly said, wouldn't there be one on their doorstep rather yeah, than absolutely. somebody from Didn't And also, that, that all has a knock-on effect. I mean, we're coming yeah. up to another international break. We'll have a knock-on effect on what everybody talks about. I yeah. mean, the politicians are now trying to fix England mm. football and trying mm. to fix the FA. You know, when uh, is somebody going to realise that the, the problem for England at the moment is that they're not developing enough young players? No, absolutely. They, you know, as I say, they're spending all this money on the, on the facilities, the academies, yeah. yet the kids, they still don't stick the kids in and give them a go. That's, you know? that's right. Just on England, Harry, because time is short, um, you should have got the England job, according to a big percentage of football fans in this country, when the time was right. He went to Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson had two disastrous tournaments. Do you reflect on that, Harry, and do you see it as the one that got away in your career? Yeah, I would love to have done it, Mike, for sure. I mean, it would have been, it would have been absolute, you know, a great. Thing. Do you think you would have done better than Roy Hodgson? Uh, you couldn't have done much worse, surely. No, uh, well, no, I mean, I did tournaments. At the end of it, it's all these qualifying games, we win 10 out of 10. How many times have we done that? We're beating San Marino, we're beating the Faroe Islands or someone. Then we get to a tournament and we can't beat Iceland. I yeah. mean, it's so... Why is that? Do you know? I don't know. I'll keep looking at us, Mike. I keep thinking we've got good players. Every tournament, I went to South Africa. I thought, well, I fancy us to win the World Cup. I look at the squad. What a, what a group of players. Yeah. It's bang, we're out as usual. You know, yeah. it happens every tournament. But yeah. Hopefully, you know, good luck to Gareth Southgate. Hopefully, uh, he can sort something out and get us going. But um, and we've got, I think we've got some good young well, players. Well, and one of the teams that's supplying a lot of the good young England players, of course, is, is Spurs right yeah. now. Yeah. Tottenham yeah. got a great big game coming up later on this afternoon against Liverpool. Yeah. How do you see that one going? Well, I'm not, I'm not sitting on the fence, uh, I, I, but I do genuinely think it will be a draw. As a mm. betting man, if you ask me to put my money where my mouth is, I think I'd bet the draw. Liverpool mm. have been on a disastrous run. But they're, they're up against a very good side this afternoon. Tottenham. They've been losing points and losing games to teams much poorer than Tottenham. Two cup defeats in a week, sat going out to Southampton. Yep. You know, sometimes the, big, the bigger teams that come to Liverpool, though, Liverpool play better. Game. They yeah. somehow raise their They'll game. They'll raise their game today. Yeah. They'll raise their game for yeah. Tottenham. Tottenham are a good team. I think when Tottenham's mm. got their best eleven out there, I see. I do see Tottenham winning the champion, winning the Premier League in the next couple of years. I think they're, I, they're that I, strong. I think they could. Frank Lampard's now joined the Chelsea coaching uh, staff. Yeah. Now it's interesting because this week, of course, it was highlighted your. You remember your your dramatic speech yeah. in defence of Frank Lampard when he was a kid. You know, yeah. 17 or 18 year old, fresh faced kid. No, he did everything that you said in that speech that he would do and do more. But when these guys who've had great careers, like Steven Gerrard and, and Frank, mm. go back to their clubs as coaches, is that the right place to start? 
Is, you know, Mike, when we I mean, start, you didn't. You went right no, to the when basement. we started out, it was different then. We weren't earning no money. We'd start out managing at low levels. Your problem you've got is Steven Gerrard or Frank Lampard, as much as they love the game, are they going to go and take, is Frank Lampard going to go to Leighton Orient for 40 grand a year <laughs> right. when he's been earning 150 grand a week or yeah, whatever he that's earns? True, yeah. So, you know, it's two yeah. days. And then it, it's full on. It, you're not going to go there. And you, that you've got to earn your 40 grand a week. You've got a chairman driving you mad who thinks he knows everything, probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've, you've got to go. Every night you're out watching games in the lower divisions looking for players because your players still come from England, yeah. unlike, you know, many of uh, the top clubs. Mm. So it's just, are they going to do that? That's, mm. that's your problem. Or do they go into TV and go and earn this half a million quid or a million yeah. quid a year yes. or, you know, well, two more million. than that, three, two, three million or, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. 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 Are they going to go and earn yeah. big money yeah. and, and yeah. do that? Yeah. No, what I, do you make of what's going on? Because we haven't got a terribly lot, awful no. lot of time. About down at the bottom of the league, it's almost as interesting. In fact, yeah. sometimes what's say more interesting than what's going on at the mm. top. Um, have you got yet sort of three teams that you think you might not see in the Premier League next year? Well, I mean, I've been with, I've said a whole, that although they're going OK at the moment, they've picked up a bit under the new, the new manager. Sunderland, mm. I still think David Moyes has got a very difficult job there. Um, I've got a feeling Middlesbrough could get sucked into it. There's something I saw. Really? Last, yeah, I think I've I saw playing them today. Good news for you, Paul. Good news for you, that. Good well, Luke Al, Luke Al in top form. Now I get they might get hammered by Everton this afternoon. Uh, what about Crystal Palace? Well, uh, that result last week was incredible, wasn't it? Amazing. Four 0 I you mean, couldn't have predicted yeah. that. Couldn't have predicted. I saw them on the Tuesday night before at Bournemouth. They played very well. One right. two nil. And I thought they they were going to run there, Palace, yeah. get out of trouble. Yeah. But, you know, Sam's gone in there, everyone thinks they're going to pick up and suddenly they're going to shoot up the league. And, you know, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Obviously, the players are not as good as everybody thinks they are. Yeah, that, I mean, for Sam, that must have been devastating because he'd been billed as the man who will save Palace from relegation. Yeah, I still think he'll save them. I still think they'll just about stay up. But uh, it's certainly not been easy for him, has it? No, it, it, it hasn't been easy. And the fans will get on his back terribly now because a 4-0 defeat at home is a humiliation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, got a tough game to that Stoke. Yeah. You, don't, you know, you, still, yeah. you don't go to Stoke and get an easy uh, game. Mark Hughes is grumpy already before yeah. the game's yeah. even yeah. started. Yeah. That's, that's, that's unusual, yes. Yeah. 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 I, I was right. asking Paul Dickoff earlier whether he was exactly the same as that when he's not on camera. And he said, yep, yeah. he's just he, grumpy all the time. I was here by breakfast with Tony Pulis this morning at the yes. hotel. Yes. He's the West Brom team was staying well. I was mm. ran in Docklands here. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. he's looking forward to going to okay. uh, West Ham. And, and, and Chelsea unstoppable now for the Premier League title? I think so, Mike. I can't see him getting caught, really. No, I can't you know, really. Um, it, well, was Conte as clever as everybody tells me is that in that he, he switched his defensive formation? Well, he only switched it. I mean, when he came, I thought he'd play the way he's playing now, but he didn't. He played with a back four. But then they had two bad defeats, and he changed it because of two bad defeats, and he, he struck on... He's a winning it. formula. Right. Harry, I'm sorry, we're out of We've time, go. unfortunately. Good to talk yeah. to you guys. Uh, Thank you, know, you very much uh, indeed. Uh, but we'll be talking to you very, very shortly. We will. Uh, we'll see you <laughs> soon. Uh, Harry Redner, of course, a legend of the game, uh, joining us there, uh, telling us that he thinks uh, the three teams that might go down uh, are going to be Hull, uh, it's going to be possibly Middlesbrough, uh, and it's probably Sunderland, but uh, Chelsea to win uh, the title. Well, that's it, Mr. Parry. Uh, uh, we've yes. had a fantastic time here at the XL. Yeah. We're going to be hanging around for about uh, an hour, though, aren't we? Well, we're going to be hanging around. The XL is a great exhibition here. Harry Redner is going to be with us and we're going to be exchanging a few ideas with Harry, asking him a few questions and getting his intimate and extensive knowledge on football. Excellent. Marvellous stuff.